Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Dr. Sheriful Halim and today I'm going to talk about the structure and function of adrenal gland and some disorders of adrenal hormone deficiency, adrenal enzyme deficiency, which are called congenital adrenal hyperplasias. So let's first start with a look at the adrenal gland. So this is a section through the adrenal gland which in a good view. So you can see adrenal gland here and the adrenal gland is actually divided into two parts. The outer parts are called the adrenal cortex and the inner part or in between the cortex you have the adrenal medulla. And the cortex is actually subdivided into three layers. The outer layer is called the zona glomerulosa, then the middle layer is called fasciculata and the innermost layer is called the zona reticularis. Each of those layers have their distinct hormone secretion. The zona glomerulosa layer actually secretes the aldosterone, which is the salt and water conserving hormone of your body. Fasciculata mainly secretes the cortisol and reticularis mainly secretes the sex hormones or androgens. The medulla has the cells called chromaffin cells and the chromaffin cells actually secretes the catecholamines. And about the control, the zona fasciculata and reticularis are in the control of the hypothalamic pituitary system. So you have first the secretion of the corticotropin releasing hormone or CRH from the hypothalamus which goes into the anterior pituitary and stimulates the secretion of ACTH or elaborately adrenocorticotrophic hormone. So adrenocorticotrophic hormone is the main stimulator of release of substances from fasciculata and also from reticularis. But the zona glomerulosa and the allosterone secretion is actually controlled by another system which is called renin angiotensin system. And renin is a substance which is released from the juxtaglomerular apparatus in your uh, kidney and the renin actually activates the angiotensinogen to angiotensin and this angiotensin comes to your glomerulosa and stimulates the secretion of aldosterone. And the control of the chromaffin cells or secretion of catecholamines is under the uh, sympathetic fibers which are preganglionic. And this preganglionic sympathetic fibers uh, does not secrete norepinephrine or epinephrine as a neurotransmitter rather they secrete acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter and those acetylcholine actually binds to the nicotinic N type or NN receptors on the chromaffin cells and stimulates the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine from the chromaffin cells to the blood or systemic circulation and for remembering layers of adrenal gland here is something from uh, fast date 2015 edition and the mnemonic says the deeper you go, the sweeter it gets. It gets. So from the outer layer, you have the secretion of aldosterone. So aldosterone controls the reabsorption of uh, sodium in the kidney, renal tubules. So salt, so it's salty, not sweet. Then you have the glucocorticoids or cortisol from the zona fasciculata, which actually increases your sugar. So it's a bit more tasty and the most tasty or the most entertainment is sex i think it's kind of sweeter than sugar so uh, the androgens are secreted from the reticularis so the deeper you go the sweeter it gets a bit erotic nebulic so the primary control of adrenal secretion as i have already mentioned it's primarily controlled from hypothalamus by the release of corticotropin releasing hormone which stimulates the release of acetate from the anterior pituitary gland and here is some clinical uh, important clinical notes to remember that whenever you have a decrease in hormones from fasciculata or reticularis or decrease in cortisol or androgens uh, they have a negative feedback on the uh, CRH so if the level is decreased uh, the CRH level will be up and uh, corticotropin releasing hormone not only increases ACTH but also increases the malonocyte stimulating hormone or MSH and beta androphin because all of them have a, a similar or same precursor which is known as pro opio malonocotin and uh, this is this becomes clinically important in case of Addison's disease or adrenal insufficiency in case of Addison's disease you have low level of cortisol and other androgens especially cortisol and this stimulates 
uh, into secretion of CRH and ultimately into secretion of MSH. MSH is responsible for stimulation of secretion of melanin from your melanin melanocytes in the skin and so the, there is skin hyperpigmentation in case of Addison's disease and this might be a cl important clinical clue okay so here you can see a very important slide which is um, must which is actually must for someone preparing for an exam and it's actually important for your clinical life too so uh, let me make it easy for you so as the hormones secreted from the adrenal gland are all steroid hormones though they all have the same precursor which is the cholesterol so cholesterol have the sterile nucleus and this cholesterol ultimately gives rise to aldosterone from the glomerulosa cortisol from the fasciculata and testosterone and other androgens from reticularis and cholesterol actually goes to multiple steps of metabolism and there are multiple enzymes which are actually involved in the synthesis of the substances and this enzyme can be deficient in some people and now one of the important deficiency is deficiency of 17 alpha hydroxylase so 17 alpha hydroxylase is actually a very important enzyme which helps the transition of uh, the intermediates in the zona glomerulosa to go into the inter to become into the intermediates of fasciculata and reticularis and there are two other hormones which two other enzymes which are 21 hydroxylase and 11 beta hydroxylase so they actually stimulates or uh, catalyzes the reaction necessary for uh, synthesis of the later substances in the zona glomerulosa and ultimately synthesis of aldosterone and cortisols so it will become as uh, very important in uh, deficiencies are uh, also called congenital adrenal hyperplasias so why why the diseases are, co are called congenital adrenal hyperplasias so this is named because if you have a deficiency of the enzymes responsible for synthesis of different hormones in the adrenal gland there will be deficiency of adrenal hormones and if there is a deficiency of adrenal hormones this will have an impact on the first on the hypothalamus and then on the pituitary gland and there will be increased secretion of crh and acth and acth will actually stimulate the hyperplasia of the adrenal gland so adrenal gland will be bigger due to uh, due to action of acth on it so this kind of makes sense and first we talk about the 17 alpha hydroxylase so as you see here the 17 alpha hydroxylase are the 17 alpha hydroxylase are responsible for conversion of the primary metabolites in the zona glomerulosa to the metabolites of zona fasciculata and reticularis so uh, if this enzyme is deficient the metabolites cannot actually go to fasciculate and reticularis so this is kind of a blocked off so the substances cannot go to this area so they are stuck in the zona glomerulosa so only the substances that are produced in zona glomerulosa are increased so there will be an increased level of aldosterone and there will be decreased level of cortisol and also decreased level of testosterone and other androgens so as you can see here the mineral corticoid mineral corticoids like aldosterone and also the intermediates like uh, corticosterone and 11 deoxycorticosterone will be increased whereas the cortisol and the sex hormones or androgens will be decreased because there is actually a block uh, in between the secretion of those and as the mineral corticoids like aldosterone are responsible for conserving water uh, along with salt so conserving salt along with water there will be uh, increased volume in your uh, body and this increased volume will lead to increased blood pressure and one important action of aldosterone in the kidney is increased release of potassium from the distal uh, distal collagen tubule especially the distal collagen tubules and there will be uh, loss of potassium in, in your urine so there will be hypokalemia and the labs will show a decreased level of endostenedione which is actually w one of the important uh, 
androgen intermediate so there will be a decreased level of androsterone because there will not be synthesis of androsterone as there is blockage of secretion blockage of transition of those intermediates to the intermediates in the right side and the presentation are very important to remember so as the patient does not have a lot of uh, sex hormones they will have deficiency of sex hormones so if uh, the patient is a male the patient will develop something called pseudo hermaphroditism and it is actually characterized by ambiguous genitalia because you need uh, your uh, androgens for the development of genitalia and also the patient will have undescended testes and if the patient is a female uh, she will have normal structure uh, until she is in puberty and she will lack the development of secondary sexual characteristics like the pubic hairs and axillary hairs and other uh, important secondary sexual characteristics so this is all about the 17 alpha hydroxyl deficiency another important deficiency is 21 beta hydroxylase deficiency and uh, as you can see here from this picture and uh, first let us clear off So as you can see from this picture, um, so 21 beta hydroxylase, uh, 20, 21 hydroxylase is an important uh, catalyzer or important enzyme which actually catalyzes the reaction in the later steps of synthesis of aldosterone and cortisol. So if you have a deficiency of 21 hydroxylase, uh, you will not have enough amount of aldosterone cortisol so uh, this pro as this process is blocked off there will be deficiency of aldosterone and also a deficiency of cortisol so the metabolites like progesterone and pregnenolone will be actually shifted to be used as an intermediate to synthesis of aldosterone and testosterone so as you can see here let us clear it also So as you can see here the mineral corticoids and the cortisol will be decreased so decreased mineral corticoids and decreased cortisol so as you can see here both of them are decreased but there will be increase in sex hormone and as you have a decrease in mineral corticoids which are responsible for retention of volume in your bloody body uh, it will lead to hypotension so decreased blood pressure and also there will be decreased secretion or excretion of potassium from your kidney so that's why the potassium will build up and lead to hyperkalemia and uh, whenever you have hypotension it will stimulate the juxtaglomerular apparatus of your kidney so there will be increased renin activity and also as you have seen the sex hormones and their intermediates are increased like one intermediate is 17 hydroxyprogesterone so here you can see uh, 17 hydroxyprogesterone is an intermediate in the synthesis of androsterone so it will be increased and the presentation depends it is the most common of the uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasias and it presents in infancy and as you have a deficiency of mineral corticoids there will be waste of salt like sodium and water so this is called salt hosting and in case of male uh, it will uh, result in childhood precocious puberty in case of female it will result in virilization so virilization is something uh, like when a girl has features like that of a boy like clitoromegaly uh, and something like that and another important deficiency of enzyme is 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency uh, if someone has a deficiency of 11 beta hydroxylase uh, he, he or she will not have the ultimate products of uh, synthesis so ultimate products of general glomerulosa is aldosterone and fasciculata is cortisol so the ultimate products will be blocked so there will be a decreased level of aldosterone and cortisol uh, just like that of 21 hydroxylase deficiency but there is a tiny difference between those uh, 21 hydrocellus deficiency would lead to a decreased level of deoxycorticosterone because uh, the system is blocked here but if someone has 11 beta hydrocellus deficiency the patient will still be able to synthesize 11 deoxycorticosterone and there is something special about 11 deoxycorticosterone is that 11 deoxycorticosterone has some degree of activity of aldosterone 
and 11 deoxycortisol have some degree of activity of cortisol so the patient will not have the full-blown features of aldosterone and cortisol deficiency like that of seen that seen by uh, patients seen in patients with 21 hydrocellular deficiency so here let us clear it again uh, here you can see the patient will have a decrease in aldosterone level but the patient will also have an increase in deoxycorticosterone level and deoxycorticosterone level has the same kind of functions like aldosterone but a bit less potent uh, but it will ultimately result in increased blood pressure and the cortisol level will be low and the uh, uh, sex hormones level will be up because uh, some of the substances will divert to, meta to be metabolites of androgens and <coughs> that's why sex hormone level will be up and as there is activity of 11-deoxycorticosterone uh, as aldosterone, it will result in some degree of uh, high blood pressure and some degree of potassium loss uh, leading to a decrease, uh, a decrease potassium in your body or hypokalemia. And as the blood pressure is increased, it will lead to a decreased release of renin <coughs> from the JG apparatus. And in case of a female, it will lead to virilization or some male characteristics in a female child. So here, uh, to summarize the actions, again to review it, the aldosterone is released from the zona glomerulosa, which is secreted in response to decreased blood volume via uh, angiotensin II, which is the ultimate product of the renin angiotensin system. And also, increased plasma potassium stimulates the release of aldosterone. And the main action of aldosterone is to increase so sodium reabsorption, increase potassium secretion, and increase hydrogen secretion. So aldosterone will result, increased aldosterone will result in a raised blood pressure due to retention of volume and hypokalemia. And also as it has uh, increased secretion of um, hydrogen, it will result in alkalosis, which is metabolic alkalosis. So the pH will be higher. And the cortisol, which is released from zona fasciculata, is actually bound to corticosteroid blind binding globulin. And the main function of cortisol is increase in some uh, body systems and a reduction of response in some body system. So the main one of the main response of cortisol is to increase blood pressure, and it actually does not do it uh, directly. Rather, it does it indirectly, which is actually called the passive action or the permissive action. So it is like that. Uh, it goes like that. Cortisol actually upregulates the alpha one receptors on arterioles. And those alpha-1 receptors now will have an increased sensitivity to the uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine which is already present in the circulation. So they will have a more of an effect if there is an increased level of cortisol which causes increased level of alpha-1 receptors. And in high concentrations, uh, those cortisols can also bind to the aldosterone receptors in the kidney and can also lead to some retention of salt and fluid so some degree of uh, raised blood pressure and cortisol also increases insulin resistance and it's actually diabetogenic because you know uh, one of the name of cortisol is it's kind of a glucocorticoid so this is a counter regulatory hormone and also it's a stress hormone so it's diabetogenic or it causes hyperglycemia and the way it does it is it increases gluconeogenesis one of the way is it, it increases gluconeogenesis and it increases gluconeogenesis by increasing the synthesis of the enzymes that are responsible for gluconeogenesis in the liver and it also causes lipolysis and proteolysis in uh, areas which are not liver so it causes proteolysis in the muscles uh, but it doesn't cause proteolysis in liver so it's kind of a, a two-phased uh, hormone and the some the functions of cortisol which are decrease uh, decreasing some features like it decreases fibroblast activity and this can lead to uh, formation of stria due to weakening of your skin like abdominal stria because abdomen has this big pressure from inside so if the abdomen uh, the abdominal wall has a, a looser or a thinner skin there will be development of stria and cortisol also decreases inflammatory and immune response so this is actually very important to remember because all the clinical most of the clinical uses of cortisol actually are based on this activity and 
the, the cortisols actually inhibit the production of leukotrienes and prostaglandins. As you can remember from your pathology or physiology that prostaglandins and leukotrienes are actually synthesized from your cell membrane. So your cell membrane has something called phospholipids and the phospholipids uh, gives rise to arachidinic acid and the arachidinic acid ultimately gives rise to the metabolites like leukotrienes and prostaglandins. And to release arachidinic acid from phospholipids in the cell membrane, you need something called phospholipase A2. And cortisol actually inhibits this enzyme called phospholipase A2, so thereby ultimately reduces the level of leukotrienes and prostaglandins. And another function of cortisol is it inhibits the WBC adhesion on the vessel wall, so it inhibits ultimately transmigration of the uh, uh, neutrophils into the uh, area that you need them, like uh, in the areas of inflammation. And by this, it causes neutrophilia. It's very important to remember because it, it uh, s s s sometimes it comes in the examination. So you know, uh, most of the times, uh, a lot of your neutrophils are actually attached to the vessel wall. So those are attached uh, or peripheralized neutrophils. And whenever you give someone cortisol or increased level of cortisol, they actually causes those neutrophil to. Uh, uh, to actually uh, get off from the vessel wall and get into the active circulation. So there will be a transient neutrophilia and in some patients that might lead to uh, increase in temperature. So the patient might get fever and might get chills. So this is a normal response to cort uh, cortisol or the corticoid administration. And it also blocks the release of histamine from the mast cell and it reduces the level of eosinophils and blocks the production of interleukin-2. And another function is it decreases bone formation. So uh, the mechanism is it decreased osteoblast activity. So the mnemonic for remembering all those important functions of cortisol is big fib. So it increases this th big and decreases this fib. So big is for blood pressure, insulin resistance, and increased glucose. Fib for fa decreased fibroblast activity, decreased inflammation, and decreased bone formation and exogenous corticosteroids uh, actually uh, as they causes immunosuppression they can cause reactivation of TB and candidiasis uh, mainly by blocking the interleukin-2 production which are released from your CD4 T cell and um, uh, very important in their activation. And the regulation of cortisol is I have already mentioned that the corticotropin releasing hormone from hypothalamus stimulates ACTH which increases cortisol production in fasciculator. And if there is excess cortisol, it will have a negative effect on the synthesis of CRH. There will be decreased CRH and decreased ACTH and ultimately decreased cortisol secretion. But and if someone has a chronic stress state, it will lead to prolonged secretion of uh, cortisol. So that's all from me today. Thanks for watching my video and wait for more.